News Talk with Julia Cosby at International News Channel and Take TV is on Ontario's ongoing corona pandemic situation and as well as on what Ontario's budget has to share to combat this pandemic. I'm joined with Nina Tangri, Conservative Member of Provincial Parliament for Mississauga Streetsville. I'm here with Nina Tangri. She is the Conservative Member of Provincial Parliament for Mississauga Streetsville. Hello, welcome, Nina. Um, Thank you very much, Julia. Nice to see you. Very, very nice to see you. Uh, so we're going to just dip into this. We're going to talk about the pandemic. We're going to talk about the new budget. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, what's the situation with the third wave of the pandemic in your riding and how are you dealing with it? So uh, as we all know, um, during the third wave, we've, it's really um, almost a fire out of control. It's mm -hmm. extremely devastating to so many people and so many families. Uh, what we're seeing right now, my riding uh, consists of L5M, L5N and L5W, all of which are part of the hot zone. So uh, what we're seeing is a lot of people within my riding who are essential workers that are going to work, taking transit. And it's just, um, you know, we just want to make sure that we can find a way, one, to get as many people as possibly vaccinated, and two, that people, you know, follow all of the protocols to stay safe and physically distance, continue to wear their masks. And we know that in some circumstances uh, at the workplace, that it is difficult. Uh, we've worked with many companies uh, in my riding and around uh, to try and find ways where they can help people with plexiglass and other ways to, to try and keep them apart from each other so they're not too close. Um, but it, it's still it's still um, a huge issue. So we're trying to get as many of these vaccination pop-up clinics running as we can. So that is our next target. Your government claims that the 2021 uh, budget is the next phase in Ontario's response to COVID-19. How so? So um, it's it's going to. So we had uh, previously we wanted to make sure that we were keeping people stable as possible. But now it's recovery. Uh, so I. Uh, so the issue right now is to make sure that we can continue to try and find ways to make sure that we can recover once we come out of this pandemic. Now, we're not sure, of course, right now where, when the end of the pandemic will be, but we can't stop working. We can't stop making sure that we, you know, we take care of our businesses, that we make sure that we continue to support uh, our local small businesses and large. And uh, of course, a lot with a lot of that comes the jobs, too. So. Uh, that's what we're really focusing on right now. So within the budget, it's focusing on how we come out of this and how we can find better ways to make sure that we can move forward and our economy can increase. Well, Ontario's health minister uh, had a statement where she said, "Health, uh, you can't have a healthy economy without healthy people. But the pandemic is creating a havoc on people and the economy's uh, health both. Um, this could be depression, which leads to suicide, different mental illnesses. Um, but how would your government handle both challenges, health and economy? And that's it. That's what we've been working throughout is that balance. So how do we try and keep essential businesses of course have need to stay open because we need food uh we need to make sure that we have supplies of everyday supplies that you know keep us going but at the same time everybody that sort of stay at home some people have been out uh, you not been in the workplace uh, since March of last year. So, you know, if you're living alone and you're in a, in a small home or a small condominium, or if you have a large family in a small place, or, you know, even if you're, you know, for anyone to be at home, uh, not going out, not meeting with the people that they normally meet with, whether it's at work or elsewhere, it's been very trying on our mental health. And, you know, I'm seeing it all around. I see it and I have a lot of family that, uh, you know, in Australia, in the UK and in India, and we're, I'm watching Watching how different countries are dealing with the pandemic, it's been devastating for everyone globally. So we're trying to find ways, our government is saying, how can we support people by making sure that they understand that there's somewhere to turn. So if you do feel alone, you do feel um, depressed, you feel stressed, there's always, it, we're all just a phone call away. So, you know, don't hesitate. Uh, don't feel like you are alone. Uh, there's a lot of people there to help you. So that's what we have to make sure that we do. But at the same time, like I said, with our um, businesses, especially our small local businesses, they've been hurt really bad. And we know restaurants have had a, a, a huge hit. Our banquet halls, the people that were supposed to get married last year and so far this year have had to either postpone or had a much smaller wedding that they had planned on. Um, but 
one of the biggest people that it's really hurt are our small personal care workers. So uh, personal care workers as in salons and you know nail salons and hairdressers, they've really taken the brunt of this because they haven't been, op been, been open, especially in Peel region in Toronto. Uh, they've been closed for a very long time and they only had that small window where they were open uh, prior to closing down before Christmas. Uh, now the opposition has been making uh, statements that they're not satisfied with the government's vaccine plan. Uh, NDP leader Andrea Horvath uh, said that she has no doubt that the federal government has done a poor job in procuring vaccines, but that doesn't let the poor government off the hook. Um, so uh, her quote is, the messed up distribution system here in Ontario sits at the feet of Doug Ford and his government. Uh, how would you defend this criticism? Look, uh, she's the leader of the official opposition. Her job is to hold the government to account. Uh, however, you know, when we, we look at how the vaccine distribution has taken place, uh, we have a health table. Uh, we have our chief medical officer of health who works uh, with all of our other local regional medical officers of health and between all of them and our government together is deciding the distribution. Now, when we receive our distribution from the federal government, when the vaccines eventually do come, um, so we initially we were looking at a uh, population base of over 80s. So they were, the, they were the, the, uh, the, the constituents that we really wanted to get vaccinated because the biggest impact of COVID at that time uh, were those either that were seniors or in long-term care homes, as we know. Um, you know, we had so many you know, people die. So we wanted to make sure we got those people and the staff at those locations, our healthcare workers who are on the front lines every day. Uh, we wanted to make sure that all of those people within that group were first vaccinated. So I, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I think that was absolute priority one. And, and as we started bringing down the age groups, which we have, um, now we're at the 50 plus in most places. Some locations have 45 plus. And now in our hot zone here in Peel and Toronto and some other areas, uh, where we really have a significant number of COVID, uh, COVID cases, uh, we're trying to, to put together, we have them in the pharmacies, we have many pharmacies within Peel that are already up and running, um, but they are for the most part the 50 plus or 55 plus because it's the AstraZeneca. But uh, for the pop-up clinics that we're bringing, we're trying to have and getting to the workplaces. I think ideally for that one, it's going to be the Moderna vaccine. Um, the unfortunate thing, of course, with the Moderna vaccine now is that we've just received another delay. Uh, so that is our biggest issue. We have everything ready to go to get the vaccine in people's arms, but we have to have the vaccines. And if we don't have those vaccines, that is our, that's our biggest problem right now. We have people very, very eager to get their vaccines. We heard about Peterborough where there was a young student who um, chose not to go to a party. However, others in the house that, where he lived did go and they brought it home and he died. That, you know, and I just heard from a constituent today asking because her son's coming home from university and he's living here in a hot zone going back to, uh, uh, back to his uh, university and she's quite concerned about him going back and, you know, she wants to get him vaccinated in between. He is part of that 18 plus group, so he's qualified, but we just don't have the vaccines available for him. Um, but it, it's 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 critical right now. We really have to make sure that we get those vaccines here. Um, I know the cabinet is meeting today uh, to look at other decisions they perhaps could be taking to try and curb more spread. That is the biggest uh, problem we're facing right now. We have to find ways. We have to ask the public, and I'm pleading to the public right now, please, please wear a mask, physically distance, sanitize, stay home if you can, only leave home for either work or essential items. Um, there's no need to be out, um, you know, walking around. I'm not talking about regular walking exercise. Absolutely, we need to get fresh air and exercise. But, you know, getting together with friends and family, please don't do that right now. Let's just get this over with. The sooner we can get over with this pandemic, we can start getting together and socializing once again. How does this 2021 budget help your riding and your city in the face of this pandemic? So the budget, uh, as I said, it works on recovery. I have a significant number of large, medium sized and small businesses. So, you know, like most writings and uh, the way we see it is this is a way for us to assist many of those coming out 
of the pandemic to start rebuilding again. As you know, we added, uh, we doubled the amount that uh, people were getting under the Ontario benefit for, for businesses. So if uh, it was between 10 and 20,000, for those who received uh, previously, they're automatically going to get a double up. So they don't have to reapply. Uh, they're auto automatically going to get a double up of that. So, you know, like I was talking about the salons, hairdressers, restaurants that had to close for a period. So now they will be able to get that extra benefit. And I think that was critical for many of them just to stay afloat. So. You know, they've they've suffered very, very much. And now another change that we've made with this stay at home order uh, in the past where we, for example, Walmart and Costco were open, but they were open to sell all products that they, they had. Um, because they sold groceries, they were able to stay open. And a lot of our small businesses were suffering because of that. So they, they felt that it was, you know, if people are going to Costco to buy jeans, for example, but they're not allowed to open to sell their jeans in their small store. So this time with the stay at home order, we've asked Costco, Walmart and all the other stores, uh, grocery stores that sell other products that are not essential, that they need to cordon those off. So people are not going to shop for those items. They're going to buy essentials only. So I think that uh, that was very much welcomed by our small business community. Um, and, and we understand that uh, people may need some of those things. So please just go online and purchase them that way. You can still do curbside pickup uh, from all of those stores. So you're, you're still able to purchase items that you need. Um, but the essential items only uh, is where you can go in and, uh, you know, make those purchases right now. Is your government satisfied with the federal government's plan and supply for the pandemic, for the vaccine? So right now, I mean, it, it, it can't be a who's made mistakes and what's happened. Right now, we have to work with our federal government uh, and our public health units together to, to find the best way to get people vaccinated. We know there's not enough supply. Uh, I know many vaccines, uh, you know, 100, over 100 million vaccines, I think, have been procured. Um, by the various companies, whether it be AstraZeneca, Pfizer or Moderna. Um, Johnson & Johnson was approved. Uh, we have not received any as of yet. We were, I think, supposed to receive them by the end of the month, but there have now been other concerns about that vaccine. So that, I believe, is on hold at this moment. Um, so, you know, it, it seems that the receiving the vaccines has been extremely slow. Um, over the past few weeks, however, with Pfizer, I know we've had a fairly steady in, uh, incoming amount of Pfizer. Moderna, like I said earlier, we've had many delays. Uh, AstraZeneca has been quite difficult to come by. We had our first shipment come from the Serum Institute in India, and this last shipment just came from the United States. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to procure a lot more and have more coming in in a more stable environment. I had my vaccine for the uh, last Friday and I had it at the University of Toronto, Mississauga. So that's part of the Trillium Health Partners. And I have to say it was extremely well run. Um, booking online um, was very simple. When I got there, just moving through the different steps was very seamless. It, was, it worked very well. Uh, I have to commend all of the people that uh, are taking part in that and putting it together. And I've heard from many of my constituents uh, of how well it is run. So if you do qualify to get vaccinated, I ask everybody, please go online or call 1-888-999-6488 where you can make that appointment. Uh, it's really tremendous seeing the people going to get vaccinated. That is our way out of this. I think right now uh, we need to curb the spread and the only way we can curb the spread is to get as many people vaccinated as possible. How is your government helping small businesses in the face of this stay at home order? So once again, like I said earlier, we, you know, we had the 10 to $20,000 benefit um, for people to help them, uh, you know, pay and, and they can use it any way they wish. So very different to, to the federal government's program as it was initially brought out. So we said, you can have this money and use it where you best see. So whether it's to pay suppliers, whether it's to pay your rent or heat and hydro, whatever it may be, you can utilize that those funds as as you see fit because you're the business owner, you know 
uh, what is best for your business. So that is the, the the main thing that we did as far as helping small businesses. And like I said, you don't have to go back online and reapply. Uh, it will be automatically it will be deposited into your account directly. So that is uh, that was a huge plus. And we, we spoke and I'm part of the Mississauga Board of Trade. I've done many meetings uh, with the with them and our local streets for business improvement association as well as just you know talking to many business people and we asked them you know what is it that would help you uh best uh throughout this pandemic and they said we need funds but we can't have ties to it we need to make sure that we can use it how we see best so i think that's what they were really looking for and that's what we did well thank you so much nina tangri for joining me today uh that's all for our show thank you so much for joining us Thank you so much, Julie. I just want to take this opportunity to wish everyone celebrating right now. Uh, we just came through Basaki, and I also want to wish everyone a very happy Ramadan. And uh, please stay safe, stay with your family at home if possible. Please don't go out. And uh, I look forward to hopefully getting together with many of you in person very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. You were watching News Talk with Julia Cosby at the International News Channel of Tag TV today.